I am so happy to see so many of you here. The title of my PhD is Transparent Wood Biocomposites for Sustainable Development. Sustainable development was first defined in the late 80s as a development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own. So sustainable development requires meeting essential needs in regards to both economic and social growth for long-term sustainability. In 2015, the United Nations have identified 17 sustainable development goals. And this thesis addresses some of them, including goals 6, 7, and 12 to 15 in regards to sustainable growth. And sustainable growth can only be achieved by assuring environmental protection over the long term. Indeed, our demand from the Earth should not exceed its finite supply. Therefore, the use of fossil-based finite resources should be avoided, also because of the high carbon footprint of materials produced from them. And reducing our use and need for petroleum-based resources can be achieved by implementing new technologies based on renewable materials of low carbon footprint. However, bio-based origin is not enough to guarantee a carbon neutral society. And it is needed to implement green chemical processes together within a circular bioeconomy where carbon sequestration and emissions balance each other over the long term. Trees is one of the most abundant renewable material. And in Sweden, forest covers up to 65% of the land area. Therefore, uh, materials from trees if they're used for long service life or important for sustainable development. And wood is therefore an attractive renewable material because it combines low environmental impact with high mechanical performance. And the excellent mechanical performance of wood originates from its hierarchical structure. Wood is a sophistic sophisticated material that is anisotropic and organized at various level from the meter scale down to the nanometer scale. The hardwood tissues consist of cylindrical wood cells that have various morphologies and functions. The fibers are about 30 micron wide and about one millimeter long and serve for mechanical support. While the vessels can be up to several hundred micron wide and are open-ended channels for water conduction. The cell wall is layered and consists of oriented cellulose microfibrils that are assembled at the nanoscale in a matrix of hemicellulose and lignin. Wood has also a hierarchical porous structure with microscale pore space in the lumen, the center of the wood cell, as well as nanoscale porosity in the cell wall. And the naturally occurring porosity of wood can be utilized for functionalization. For example, a functional polymer can be filling the lumen in order to provide wood with electrical conductivity. Or the cell wall can be chemically modified in order to increase nanoporosity so that nanoparticles can be infiltrated to provide a new functionality to wood. And various wood nanotechnologies can be produced. And transparent wood is one of them, which combines optical transparency with mechanical performance. And transparent wood is prepared via a two-step procedure. Starting from birch or any hardwood species as a veneer, the material is first delignified. And delignification is used in order to remove the light absorbing lignin within the wood. We then obtain a delignified wood substrate, which is white and has a retained porous structure. The mon a monomer can then impregnate it within the porous structure of wood and then in situ polymerize in order to form a polymer. And transparency can be achieved by matching the refractive index of the filling polymer with that of the, of the delignified wood substrate. So the final material is a biocomposite where delignified wood acts as reinforcement and the filling polymer as a polymer matrix. And typically, polymethylmethacrylate, or PMMA, has been used as polymer matrix 
for the preparation of transparent wood. The reason is that it has a refractive index of 1.49, which is close to that of the delignified wood substrate of 1.54. And the optical properties of transparent wood have been characterized in this physics in terms of optical transmittance and haze, where optical transmittance corresponds to the total transmitted light by the specimen, and haze corresponds to forward scatter light at wide angle. And the optical properties of transparent wood prepared from PMMA are attractive because it combines both high transmittance of 85% for one millimeter thick specimens and high haze of 70%. And the high haze can be visually observed by lifting a transparent wood materials above an object, which will then appear blurry or with low contrast. And the combination of high transmittance and high haze is attractive for applications such as in solar cells, because it provides a diffuse lighting as well as high transmittance. However, for in order to extend further the application of transparent wood, it is needed to further improve transmittance and reduce the haze. And this can be done by controlling the nanostructure. In particular, light scattering should be minimized. This can be done by matching the refractive index of the wood substrate with that of the polymer matrix, because refractive index mismatch would result in light scattering. Also, the compatibility between the wood and the polymer matrix should be favorable in order to avoid the appearance of debonding air gaps that would further scatter light. The polymer should be also well distributed throughout the cell wall to avoid the presence of nanoscale defects, such as air voids. So ideally, the material should have a favorable polymer distribution with the polymer matching the refractive index of that of the wood reinforcement. Finally, in regards to sustainable development, the environmental impact of transparent wood should also be minimized. And this can be done by using renewable materials resources, as well as the combined with green processing concepts throughout the design and the manufacture of the transparent wood material. The application should be for long service life and end of life scenarios should be also implemented. The objectives of this thesis were to select bio-based components and develop green chemical modification in order to achieve nanostructural control in transparent wood biocomposites. We investigated the structure property relationships in regards to optical properties and mechanical performance. And we also investigated the design of transparent wood biocomposites for thermal energy storage with controlled nanostructure. The results that I will describe now are divided into four parts. First, I will discuss a green chemical functionalization platform for wood substrate. Then, I will describe the design of fully bio-based transparent wood biocomposites. In part three, I will discuss the design of transparent wood biocomposites for thermal energy storage, including both proof of concept and bio-based design. And finally, I will discuss sustainability aspect and the environmental impact of the transparent wood in part four. I will now start by discussing a green chemical functionalization platform for wood substrates. The first, first part in preparing transparent wood is the delignification. Delignification is performed in order to remove the lignin, which is responsible for light absorption in wood. In this physics, we have used a mild and green parasitic acid treatment in order to selectively remove the lignin. Here you can see SCM, or scanning electron microscopy, images of balsa wood cross-sections. And we could observe that after the lignification, the wood microstructure was retained. We could also observe the generation of porosity in former lignin-rich regions. As you can see, on the image here with microscale porosity at the cell corner, as well as the appearance of nanoscale porosity in the cell wall. This was further supported by a large increase in specific surface area from about 10 square meter per gram up to 200 square meter per gram after the lignification. 
There was also the apparition of uh, pore, pores in the range of 2 to 10 nanometers, which supports the presence of nanoscale porosity within the cell wall. So after the lignification, we not only remove the light absorbing component in wood, but we also generate porosity. And this is uh, really interesting in order to help further functionalization because the cell wall accessibility is improved. Traditionally, uh, chemical treatments such as acetylation have been used to chemically modified wood. However, uh, this treatment need the use of toxic reactants, such as solvents, and also provide wood with a dark coloration, which is not ideal for transparent wood and its sustainable development. Therefore, in this thesis, we developed a green chemical functionalization platform using renewable cyclic anhydrides. We selected three cyclic anhydrides, including maleic anhydride in red here, itaconic anhydride in green, and succinic anhydride in blue. The functionalization was performed under solvent-free reaction conditions above the melting point of each malic anhydride. The reaction proceeds via ring opening esterification of the anhydride and results in functionalized wood substrate with introduced functional groups, including terminal carboxylic acid groups, as well as monosubstituted alkene and disubstituted alkene in the case of itaconic and malic anhydride, respectively. After the functionalization, the wood microstructure is preserved, as well as the nanostructure at a scale of 100 nanometers. And the functionalization was monitored using Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy, where we could see that after ring opening esterification of the anhydrides, we had a sharp increase in the carbonyl absorption peak when compared to the delignified wood reference. We also monitored the reaction rate by following the absorption of the carbonyl peak, and we could observe that succinic anhydride reacted about eight times faster than malic anhydride, so that very short reaction times could be used of about 30 minutes only, and resulted in very high carboxyl content of about four millimoles per gram. So the ring opening esterification resulted in high degree of esterification. And this resulted in a bulking effect where large anhydride molecules occupy nanoscale pore space in the cell wall. This was also supported by a decrease in the pore volume in the range of 2 to 10 nanometers, as well as a shift towards higher pore diameter range. And the bulking effect of the cell wall also resulting in the reduction of the hygroscopicity of the delignified and functionalized wood substrate. When compared to the delignified wood reference, moisture absorption was reduced by about 30% even at high relative humidities. And in order to demonstrate the versatility of the functionalization platform, we applied it for interface tailoring in transparent wood. We Infiltrated methine methylate or MMA within functionalized wood substrate and then proceed, uh, proceeded with in situ polymerization so that we could obtain functionalized transparent wood composites with tailored interface. In succinic anhydride modified transparent wood, secondary interactions take place between the PMME chains and the wood reinforcement. While in itaconic anhydride and malic anhydride covalent bonds uh, is formed between the PMMA matrix and the wood reinforcement. The functionalization resulted in an improved compatibility between the wood reinforcement and the PMMA matrix and resulted in favorable interface between the PMMA located in the lumen and the cell wall. And no apparent debonding gaps could be observed. In order to assess the effects of interface tailoring on the optical properties of transparent wood, we prepared materials at different thicknesses, ranging from one millimeter thick up to three millimeter thick. In transparent wood reference, when increasing the thickness, the transmittance is decreased because of greater light attenuation. Simultaneously, the haze is increased because of greater scattering, as you can observe on this graph here to the right. After the functionalization, the transmittance was increased and the haze was simultaneously decreased. 
and the effects were the strongest for malic anhydride and itaconic and succinic anhydride, sorry, functionalization. So that interface data ring provides an improved interface and results in improved transmittance and reduced haze. We also assess the effect of interface tethering on the mechanical performance. In longitudinal loading, functionalization results in improved strength. While in transverse loading, covenant attachment seems to correlate with improved strength, and the effects were the strongest for itaconic anhydride. To summarize part one, in this thesis, we developed a green chemical functionalization platform using renewable cyclic anhydrides. This resulted in high degree of esterification, as well as a bulking effect and reduced hygroscopicity of the functionalized wood substrate. The functionalization was applied for interface tethering in PMMA-based transparent wood and resulted in increased transmittance, reduced haze, as well as improved strength, depending on the anhydride functionalization used. However, one of the main drawbacks of PMMA is that it is fossil-based and therefore does not comply with sustainable development. Therefore, in this thesis, we developed a fully bio-based transparent wood biocomposite based on a new bio-based polymer matrix. We synthesized a new monomer via ring-opening acrylation of renewable limonene oxide. This resulted in the limonene acrylate monomer, also termed as LIMA. When polymerizing LIMA, we obtain a very transparent PLIMA cross-linked polymer, which has a refractive index closer to that of wood substrate when compared to PMMA. PLIMA has high transmittance and low haze and appears very clear as you can see on the photograph. The mechanical performance of PLIMA are typical of thermosets with a fairly brittle behavior. We then prepared bio-based transparent wood by impregnated the bio-based LIMA monomer within the lignified wood substrate and then proceed with in-situ polymerization. This resulted in a transparent wood where PLIMA bio base uh, matrix uh, is, has secondary interactions with the wood reinforcement. We also applied interface tethering using bio based succinic anhydride functionalization, also termed as succinylation. This resulted in covenant links between the PLIMA matrix uh, and the wood reinforcement as demonstrated by model experiment. In order to study the effects of interface tethering, we applied electron microscopy in order to observe the interface region in transparent wood. On the left, you can see the interface region of the bio-based transparent wood reference, where the interface between the cell wall and the lumen is very sharp. No apparent debonding gaps could be observed so that favorable interactions take place between the PLIMA matrix and the wood reinforcement. After functionalization with succinic anhydride, the interface is even more improved and covalent links result in a very well integrated interface, as you can see on the image to the right. Model experiment also showed that PLIMA is also located within uh, the cell wall. And here we can observe the presence of fibrillar structure, which are associated to the microfibril. And no aggregates could be observed so that PLIMA is well distributed throughout the cell wall. And the optical properties of transparent wood are excellent. After functionalization with succinic anhydride, we could observe an increase in transmittance so that succinylated transparent wood reached a transmittance of 89% at a thickness of one millimeter. The haze was simultaneously decreased down to 40% after succinylation treatment. So this resulted in a highly transparent bio-based transparent wood, which appears clearer when compared to PMMA-based transparent wood. And the increase in transmittance and reduced in haze is attributed to the more favorable interface after succinylation. And the effects of interface tethering were even stronger at greater thickness. We prepared transparent wood with thicknesses ranging from one millimeter thick up to three millimeter thick. And after succinylation, we could observe that the transmittance was shifted towards higher range and the haze was simultaneously decreased. So that two millimeter thick 
succinylated transparent wood had the same optical properties as the one millimeter thick reference. And the improvement of transmittance and reduction in haze is attributed to the favorable interface in succinylated transparent wood, as well as favorable polymer distribution throughout the cell wall and the well-matched refractive index between succinylated reinforcement and the PLIMA matrix. In order to use transparent wood for load-bearing applications, it is required to increase the wood content. Therefore, we prepare transparent wood from various wood species with increasing density from balsa, alder, birch, and beech. We applied succinylation, and here you can see the optical properties in terms of transmittance and haze as a function of the wood content. When the wood content is low in transparent wood, high transmittance is achieved, as well as low haze, which is attractive for applications where transparency is required. When increasing the wood content, we could observe a decrease in transmittance and a simultaneous increase in haze because of greater light, attenu atten light attenuation, as well as improved or increased scattering due to thicker cell walls. Therefore, in order to provide high wood content and um, attractive or improved optical properties, it is needed to find a trade-off. And here we selected birch, which has a wood volume fraction of 26%, and still has high transmittance of about 90% and low haze of 44%. We prepare transparent wood from birch and analyze its mechanical performance. After succinylation, we could observe an increase in strength by about 20%, as well as an increase in stiffness by about 30%. So that succinylation resulted in improved load transfer between PLIMA matrix and the reinforcement. To summarize part two, in this visit, we developed a new bio-based PLIMA polymer matrix for transparent wood materials. We applied succinylation, which resulted in improved interfacial interactions so that the fully bio-based transparent wood had high transmittance, low haze, as well as excellent mechanical performance for load-bearing applications. From the understanding that we gained, we then designed multifunctional transparent wood for thermal energy storage applications. In this visit, a proof of concept as well as bio-based design were demonstrated for the first time. This is in the context of energy savings. Today, about 40% of the energy consumption comes from the building sector. A great amount of energy is spent to heat up and cool down our buildings. And thermal energy storage systems can be used in order to harvest and store solar energy in the form of heat in order to redistribute it later when the demand is high, so that energy, demand and supply can be balanced over the long term. And a common approach in thermal energy storage systems is to use phase change materials. These materials are like thermal batteries. They are solid that can melt while absorbing heat in the process. And when they're cooled back down below their melting point, they start crystallizing and release the previously stored heat. And the heat storage cycle of these materials can be characterized using differential scanning calorimetry, where the endothermic peak corresponds to the melting of the phase change material, and the exothermic peak corresponds to the crystallization. The maximum of the peak corresponds to the melting point, and the crystallization point. The area under the peak corresponds to latent heat, which is the storage capacity of the material. And these materials are very attractive. However, one of their main drawbacks is that they have a very poor shape stability, so that when they melt, they tend to leak out and cannot be reused many times. Therefore, it is needed to encapsulate them within a supporting medium. And commercially, uh, in commercial applications, this has been done by, for example, impregnated phase change materials within gypsum boards. In this thesis, we suggest wood as an encapsulating medium. We use birch wood because it has a homogeneous structure throughout the growth rings, 
as well as a mesoporosity, which is useful for encapsulating a phase change material. We prepare transparent wood biocomposites for thermal energy storage by impregnating the phase change material together with a polymer matrix. And here I will discuss both a proof of concept and a bio-based design. In the proof of concept, the starting material is dignified birch. We selected polyethylene glycol, or PEG, as a phase change material. It was then mixed with methylmethacrylate, followed by in-situ polymerization. So that the final material is a transparent wood with three phases, including the dignified wood reinforcement, polyethylene glycol, or PEG, as phase change material, and PMMA polymer phase. We selected PEG with a low molecular weight of 1,000 gram per mole so that it can be distributed both in the lumen as well as in the cell wall. In the bio-based design, the starting material is a succinylated and delignified birch wood substrate. We selected a bio-based phase change material, 1-dodecanol, which was then mixed with bio-based lima monomer followed by in-situ polymerization. And in the bio-based transparent wood for thermal energy storage, PLIMA matrix forms covalent link with the wood substrate, and one of the canal is distributed both in the lumen and at the cell wall, as demonstrated by model experiments. The morphology of the transparent wood for thermal energy storage is uh, very good, with good distribution of the polymer matrix throughout the wood cells, as well as favorable interfaces between the cell wall and the lumen filled with the matrix. This uh, tells us that we have favorable interactions between the matrix and the cell wall, because no apparent debonding gaps could be observed. We could also observe mesoscale domains in the cell wall, and model experiments showed that this was attributed to favorable distribution and diffusion of the phase change material inside the nanostructured cell wall. So the phase change material is both distributed in the cell wall and in the lumen space. And this resulted in excellent heat storage performance. The proof of concept transparent wood for thermal energy storage had a heat storage capacity of 76 joules per gram, which is much higher when compared to commercially available gypsum board of 40 joules per gram, for example. The phase transition occurs at 38 degrees Celsius, which corresponds to the melting of PEG, during which the material absorbs heat. Transparent wind can also effectively release heat, and this can be done over several cycles. The bio-based design showed even further improved heat storage capacity and reached a value of nine, about 90 joules per gram. The phase transition was also lowered at about 24 degrees Celsius, which is attractive to extend the applications of this material, for example, in building applications. And not only the transparent wood can absorb and release heat, but it is also optically transparent. And the phase transition can be observed by, the, by a change in transparency from opaque at low temperature to more clear at higher temperature. And the bio-based design showed a switch in optical transmittance even greater than the proof of concept and went from about 60% up to more than 85% after the phase transition. To summarize part three, we demonstrated in this thesis the design of a transparent wood for thermal energy storage with controlled nanostructure. We also showed that a bio-based design showed improved thermal energy storage performance, as well as switchable and tunable optical properties. I will now discuss the sustainability aspect and environmental impact of the transparent wood. In this thesis, we used renewable resources as primary, as primary materials in order to produce bio-based transparent wood materials. This, is, this included the use of wood veneers, which have already locked in carbon dioxide, as well as green chemical modifications. We also designed a new bio-based monomer uh, in order to prepare fully bio-based transparent wood composites, so that the carbon footprint of the material is low. The applications is also extended for sustainable application, so we can expect an even lower carbon footprint during the use phase. 
In order to evaluate the environmental impact of the bio-based transparent wood, we performed in collaboration with the IVL Swedish Institute a cradle-to-gate life cycle assessment uh, for evaluating the environmental impact of one kilogram of bio-based transparent wood for thermal energy storage. This was uh, including the environmental impact of during the production of one kilogram of bio-based transparent wood and was divided into three steps, the delignification, succinylation, and impronation and polymerization step. This also included the production of bio-based uh, and biochemicals. And the result shows that the environmental impact is dominated by the impronation and polymerization step while delignification and succinylation only accounts for less than 4% each. And by breaking this down further, we could actually observe that the production of biochemicals was the dominating factors for the environmental impact of this material. We then compared the environmental impact with other materials, including PMMA-based transparent wood, and this resulted in the graph you can see here with a decrease of about 30% in environmental impact by using a bio-based system. We also compared with petroleum-based transparent panel that are produced at industrial scale, including PMMA and polycarbonate. And the bio-based transparent wood has an environmental impact of about 40% lower. And we could expect it to be even further lower if the material uh, was compared with or was produced at industrial scale so that we could compare to optimize processes. Also, if we would include the use phase of the bio-based transparent wood for thermal energy storage, we could also expect an even lower environmental impact since the material is intended for energy savings. To summarize part four, in this thesis, we developed bio-based transparent wood for sustainable development. We also showed that bio-based transparent wood for thermal energy storage has low environmental impact and was much lower when compared to industrially produced and optimized uh, transparent panels. To conclude, in this thesis, uh, we re-engineered wood for optical transparency and mechanical performance. We have worked towards technical goals, and along the way, we have learned how to modify, prepare, and characterize transparent wood biocomposites. We also gain deep understanding of the import on the importance of the nanostructure, the composition, and their effects on the optical properties and mechanical performance. More specifically, we developed sustainable wood nanotechnologies using green and versatile anhydride functionalization, using solvent-free processes, and also developed a new PIMA monomer from renewable resources. We showed that interface tailoring increasing, increases transmittance and reduces haze. And we also showed and demonstrated nanostructural functionalization for the preparation of multifunctional transparent wood for thermal energy storage. Finally, I would like to acknowledge my supervisors for having guided me for the past four years, Professor Lars Berglund and Dr. Peter Olsen, as well as my co-authors and collaborators and and the Transparent with team members. I also wish to thank my colleagues at the Biocomposite Division, uh, at the Vallenberry Wood Science Center, and at the Fiber and Polymer Technology Department here at KTH. And finally, I would like to acknowledge funding for this PhD from the European Research Council, as well as the Knut and Alice Vallenberry Foundation. Finally, I would like to thank you for your attention. <laughs>